Uh, welcome, everyone. This is somewhat of a technical challenge for me, pardon the pun. Um, but yeah, designer or baker? I always say both. I couldn't be one without the other. Um, although best known for winning the Great British Bake Off, my background is actually in design, and this definitely feeds into all my ideas and creativity. So much so that I use what I call the spencil to sort of represent this. So it's, I give equal weight to both a spoon and a pencil when I'm drawing up designs in my sketchbook to then ultimately creating them out of food. Um, so since leaving my job as a children's wear designer at Jules, people do often ask me if I miss designing, but I find that really strange because I just feel I'm still designing now, but I've just swapped fabric for food and my medium is now edible. Um, so I can eat my mistakes, basically. Um, and yeah, the spencil is definitely a very important sort of key part to all of that. So much so that I use it on my website and it's also seen on the cover of my book, which also has how I have all my design and baking utensils laid next to one another. If you came into my kitchen, it would literally look like some sort of art studio with someone with a very creative, healthy appetite. So you've got spoons next to pencils, you've got spatulas next to rulers, whisks next to scalpels. So it is literally like a Willy Wonka workshop that goes on. Um, and when I was a designer, I often had like images of food on my mood boards and in my sketchbooks um, and color palettes. I would always be naming after ingredients. So all my colleagues knew when I was naming a color palette because creams would be mascarpone or greens would be pistachio green. Um, and this relationship can be seen in the contents page of my book because again I just sort of see everything very visually and I just find it so much easier to digest when it's like that. And these paint splodges, they don't just, um, are not just seen in the chapters but I also have what I call visual pie charts to illustrate all the proportions of my recipes ingredients. So rather than just having words and weights next to one another, I just feel that you can actually absorb the information so much easier when you see it broken down like this. Um, I don't know about you, but say if someone says a phone number really quickly, I can forget it, whereas if I see it written down, I can sort of make patterns and try and remember it that way. Um, and even sort of pages showing how you have a color palette with a taste palette and seeing gradients of different kinds of sugar um, from when you're making caramel, being able to see the butter and the sugar just laid out like that again, rather than it just being purely written text and a token cat coming in for good measure. <laughs> um, so yeah, I sort of say I have a habit of seeing everything as food, which actually really helps me come up with my designs. Because my um, degree was in textiles, I think that's why I love food so much, because it is those parallels between textures and colors and mark making. Um, so for me, when I see soil, I sort of see the similarities between chocolate cake, or when I was looking at a plant bulb, all the papery scales were reminding me of phyllo pastry. So for me, it just sort of, it's naturally like building up an idea and a recipe in my head. Um, it can even be walking past a brick wall. And in my mind, I'll start seeing how that could be translated into cocoa powder or cinnamon. And even the lines that sort of represent the sort of concrete, they can just be really simply done with wooden latte sticks. So often when I go into a coffee shop, I'm like picking up utensils that I can take back into the kitchen. Um, and this is one little video here of just showing how this actual bake came to life. So yeah, it's just about plastering it over with mascarpone and then you lay down the wooden latte sticks and then you dust over like you would a cappuccino with cocoa powder and cinnamon, pull them back and then you get individual brick pieces of cake. Um, so again, I find, again, video is really helpful to sort of illustrate the idea because you could see that coffee and walnut cake, but you're a bit like, well, what's the process behind that? So it's sort of trying to inspire people and engage people to feel that they can have a go. Um, because the one thing I sort of find, it's sort of giving people confidence because a lot of people say, oh, I, I'm not a designer or I, I can't draw, but I think there's so many different ways to express your creativity. And I think food is a really good example of that. Um, so it's a case of sort of mixing up the mediums and the techniques. So even using like a stationary sort of like a thing that you'd normally use with a felt tip, if you just get some cocoa powder and dust it over the top, you can end up with something really effective. Equally using chocolate as paint, 
Um, I've even sort of gone into a print workshop and rather than sprint, um, sort of screen printing with paint, I've used chocolate onto rice paper using a squeegee instead of a dough scraper. So it's again, it's just sort of seeing all the different craftsmanship that goes into all the different creative fields, but mixing them up and sort of, you know, sculpting with bread, how you sort of put bread into a hot oven. It's a little bit like how a potter puts clay into a really hot kiln. So it's just finding the parallels and sort of running with them really, rather than feeling, oh no, that's for one discipline, so you can't take that into another. Um, and this is a case of like when I made a biscuit palette. So it's just rolling out a biscuit dough, cutting it into a sort of simple palette shape, and then using caramels and jams and chocolate spreads. And the great thing is that the messier it is, the better it looks. So you can really use that to your advantage, a little bit like the chocolate soil, like no sort of like chocolate pot looks absolutely perfect. Um, and it's been great as well, sort of doing stuff with the Design Museum. I've taken over their Instagram um, for Font Sunday on a few occasions and just showing how fonts can appear in food, whether it be biscuits or doodling with caramel. Um, and this is another video where I'm using caramel to draw with rather than just sort of like lace between a millionaire shortbread. So, so it's just the case of putting it in a piping bag and then just sort of doodling lines and then using the popcorn to create flowers. So yeah, a messy chocolate bouquet. <laughs> um, and I love the fact that within the art world, you can sort of translate all the skills and the techniques. So this was some Barbara Hepworth inspired shortbread I did when the Hepworth Gallery up in the Wakefield was celebrating their millionth visitor. Um, and it was great walking around the gallery, seeing all the sort of um, utensils that Barbara used to create her sort of stonework and so I sort of translated that into the shortbread and again rather than having a perfect shape because shortbread naturally in the oven it's sometimes sort of it doesn't keep its form and so it was a really good sort of medium to use for creating more of the sort of necessarily perfectly smooth surfaces um, and sketchbooks are really important for my sort of process so this was when I was creating um, Matisse's blue nude out of um, a cheesecake and turning it into a blueberry nude. Um, so it was just a sort of showing the process behind it all and using collage like Matisse does as well. So cutouts of paper a little bit like Matisse uses cutouts to create all his colourful impressions. And then that turned into the Matisse blueberry nude cheesecake, which took a little bit longer than I had anticipated. That's the problem. I paint an idea in my head very quickly, but it takes that little bit longer to cut out. So yeah, those blueberries did take a little while. Um, so, and then I remember when I got asked to create, I didn't get asked to create the shout out of gingerbread, but they wanted a particular bake and rather go down the route of just doing like three tiers of cake with maybe the shard logo on, I was like, well, why don't we try and create it out of actual biscuit? So it obviously wasn't as tall as the shard, um, but I certainly had to wrap all the different pieces in bubble wrap to get it down to London. And then even just creating little mini landmarks of London. So the BT Tower turned into a tower of shortbread and chocolate buttons and Rolos. Um, but it's again, just giving people an impression of how food can easily translate itself into architectural forms or pieces of um, art. Um, so I definitely sort of, I love collaborating basically, whether it be in architecture or film or even music. Um, and also really relish sometimes making mistakes because I know that sort of the serendipity that can come from certain biscuit towers collapsing or things going wrong in the oven, how you can make them into bakes such as tiffin or cheesecake. So the base of this London skyline is basically an amalgamation of chocolate and broken biscuits. So nothing need be wasted, just like ideas. Um, and again, this is just sort of an example of how I jot down different quick little sketches that will hopefully be able to translate themselves into food. Um, and so one thing I sort of really hold <coughs> dearly is that I sort of see creativity like constellations, not necessarily Moran constellations, but just how there's lots of dots up there and we all join them in so many different ways. And I think it's that sort of, that should be relished, that it is a case of not necessarily joining the dots in all straight lines in all the same ways and certain stars sparkle to people at certain different times. 
Um, and also the great Albert Einstein, one of his quotes was that creativity is contagious and that we should pass it on. And I'm a big advocate of that. And so a little bit like, I brought it along today, but this was the, um, the giant baker's matchbox that I did on the show. And it's amazing how people remember this as much as anything else. And so as well as sort of creating breadsticks out of it, the inspiration behind it really was to try and light people's ideas and imagination to the fact that, you know, breadsticks needn't just be something that's on the table served with like cheese and sort of ham, but actually they can be turned into giant edible matches by just simply dipping them into a bit of chocolate. Um, I, I noticed there were some out the front. So again, it's just a really quick way. If you just melt some chocolate, dip them in. You don't even have to go about making your own. I won't judge you. Um, but it's sort of just sort of lighting people's ideas and making bakes interactive as well. So it's as much a talking point as something that they leave, not just having their sort of stomach filled, but you're also, you've lit someone's mind and imagination to the potential that can go beyond just the page. So yeah, I definitely inspire everyone to see food as something not just to be eaten, but to create with as well. I sort of turn the idea of playing with your food on its head and embrace it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you.